Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're playing a Jota 5 color humans sort of deck. Um, basically the premise is you ramp into Jota, everything is massive, um, and then you cascade off of Jota and kill the opponent uh, because your stuff is too big and too scary. Uh, so I've separated the cards out into a couple of different piles based on the roles they fulfill. Uh, the first one is ramp. So we have four Katilda Don, ha Don Heart Prime. Um, it has protection from werewolves, which is actually nice against, um, what's it called? Uh, Brutal Cathar. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, and then also the Hasty Wolves in some of the Gruul decks or Mono Red Aggro decks. Um, so we have four Katildas, and then also for four and a green and a white, you can tap and put a plus one plus one on each creature you control, which actually comes into play uh, quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, human creatures you control have tap, add one mana of this creature's colors. Um, most of the things in here are human, so um, you're usually getting good value off of this tap ability as well. So this acts as a ramp. Uh, on for three mana, um, two generic and one green, we have Gwana, Eyes of Gaia, Gaia, Gaia? Uh, whatever. <laughs> a new card with Brothers War, it says tap, add two mana. In any combination of colors, spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures or creature cards uh, that you control. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power five or greater, put a plus one, plus one on Gwena, Eyes of Gaia, and untap it. So this is nice to ramp into your Jota. If you have this down with three mana, you play this on three, it doesn't die. When you untap, even if you miss a land, you can play Jota off of that. And then playing Jota off of this puts a plus one plus one and then also untaps it. So then you could play something else like a Katilda or another two mana creature. Uh, we also have one Eruth, Eruth, Tormented Prophet. Um, it says if you would draw a card, exile the top two cards of your library. Instead, you may play those cards this turn. This is nice because you can um, basically it gets around Shouldred for one. And then for two, it also lets you take a look at two cards. With this deck, you are usually emptying your hand. Uh, pretty regularly um, and committing fully to the board. So being able to see too deep is nice with this as well. Um, this is kind of a ramp. Well, not really a ramp. I say ramp because you get two cards, uh, but maybe it's more of a draw card, um, which I don't really have a pile for, but there's a couple cards that, that synergize that way. Uh, we also have two Shauna Purifying Blades. Uh, this has lifelink, and then at the beginning of your end step, you may pay X. If you do draw X cards, X can't be greater than the amount of life you gain this turn. So if you attack in with Shauna while you're untapped, you can draw three cards basically off of that. Um, again, that's why she's in the uh, the ramp category. Then in this category, we have our protection. And this is protecting against board wipes, against spells, um, and basically making us more resilient to removal. So uh, in the two drop, two drop slot, speaking is difficult, we have three Thalia, uh, which basically just taxes their non-creature spells, makes them cost one more. Also, the first strike is nice um, as an early game blocker too. Uh, we have four Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard. This is an excellent card for this type of deck. Um, new from Brothers War, it's a legendary human creature, so that synergizes with the human theme. Um, says sacrifice a jar loyal bodyguard legendary creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain indestructible until the end of turn so depopulate um you know a kicked uh what's it called path of peril or any single target removal you can just sacrifice a jar and everything becomes indestructible and gets plus one plus zero even good for uh for blocking if your opponent has death touch like a shoulder attacking in um or anything like that you need to block, uh, you can sacrifice this and make your blocks. We have one Rem Carolus, 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 Stalwart Slayer. <laughs> God, my pronunciation is horrible. Uh, legendary creature, human knight, flying, and haste. If a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control, prevent that damage. If a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. Uh, basically, it gives us some protection against damage-based removal. We have one Rotodrobic of Urborg, uh, Vigilance in Ward 2. Other zombies you control have Vigilance whenever another legendary creature dies. Uh, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not a legendary, and it has two, it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So basically you play Urborg. Anything on your board dies other than the Urborg, you get a 2-2 copy of it, since most of these things have beneficial effects, uh, like a Gwena or a, Katil or a Katilda. Um, you can still utilize those effects even though they're a 2-2 and not legendary anymore. So um, just include it as a one-of, because Urborg is awesome. Uh, in this column, we have like basically our removal. 
Uh, we have two Loran of the Third Path. Vigilance, when Loran of the Third Path enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. So, Portal 2 Phyrexia, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, um, Wedding Announcement. Enchantments, artifacts are everywhere, uh, so this is actually quite a good card, um, and I would consider bumping this up maybe to three, uh, but it also has tap you and target opponent each draw a card. Um, so again, helping to refill our hand a little bit, so it could also be included in this column here. We have one Urtai Resurrected, Phyrexian Human Wizard, Flash, when Urtai Resurrected enters the battlefield, she's up to one, counter target creature spell, activated ability or triggered ability, its controller draws a card, destroy another target creature or planeswalker, its controller draws a card. Uh, this is, you know, Basically a removal spell at flash speed, but it's also human, which synergizes with everything else in the deck, um, and it's a legendary. We have one Mishra Tamer of Mach Vua. This card is awesome. Uh, it's a legendary human artificer. Permanent you control, have wards, sacrifice a permanent. So when you get Mishra and Ratadrabic down on the same board, the opponent has a very hard time dealing with what you have going on. Um, basically the only way for them to beat that is to either go over the top with damage, something like a Invoke Despair, um, or attack through you if they have bigger creatures. Um, this card is sweet. And we do, in the video, we do get this combination off, which is awesome. Um, we have two Leyline Bindings because we are playing Domain, so even with Thalia on the board, this will usually only cost two mana. And for Flash and two mana, uh, being able to exile something at instant speed is fantastic. So we included two of these. Um, there were three in the original build, but we took one out to add some some other stuff. So uh, we go over that at the end of the video. Uh, then this is just kind of a good stuff pile, which I guess should all be here. We have Denik for early blocking and life gain. Um, Denik is very good at also the graveyard um, ability is nice as well because a lot of decks do rely on their graveyard now. Um, and then Disturb, of course, you get a Flying 3-2, uh, which is nice as well um, to make it so that you can actually, you know, if your board gets wiped or whatever, you have something you can play. We have one Torrens, Fist of Angels. Training, whenever you cast a creature spell, of which every single card in the deck, except for two Leyline Bindings, is a creature. Um, create a 1-1 one, one Green and White Human Soldier creature token uh, that has training as well. So uh, this synergizes with the next card, Myral, Shield of Argive. Uh, because it creates soldiers, but also it lets you create little 1-1 one, one blockers so you can chump block and not have to worry about blocking with your legendaries um, for blocks that may not be beneficial to you. Uh, next card is Myral, Shield of Argive. Legendary creature, human soldier, out of the Brothers War. Love this card as well. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities, artifacts, creatures, or enchantments, meaning that if you have Ar uh, Myral on the field, it's your turn, and you have Joda on the field, or something else, you can attack in freely and not worry about wandering emperors um, coming in on your turn, or removal or anything like that. Uh, whenever Myral Shield of Archive attacks, create X11 colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, uh, where X is the number of soldiers you control. We have quite a few soldiers in the deck, uh, including like Thalia, for example, um, and then of course Torrens also makes soldiers, so um, Myrol can can really start taking over, uh, which is nice. And then when you have a bunch of soldiers on the board, they are one ones, but you can use Catilda to tap and put a plus one on everything, um, which buffs them up. We have one Mistra claimed by Gix, uh, kind of synergizes with the go wide secondary win con strategy. Um, we don't have the meld in here, but um, I like it for this ability, which is whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures, um, and then everything else is the meld stuff. So we're just using it for, for that little bit of drain and gain, um, because we do tend to go wide here. We also have one Halana and Elena partners. First strike and reach at the beginning of combat on your turn, but X plus one plus ones on another target creature you control, where X is Halana and Elena's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. So you could have Halana and Elena down, play Joda, put haste on Joda, send it in. Um, similarly, you could have, you know, put haste onto encounters onto your life gain stuff um, to try and kind of stabilize your life total and whatnot. And then, of course, at the top end, we have Joda the Unifier. Um, legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Obviously, we're trying to have a bunch of legendary creatures. Uh, whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land non card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, put the rest at the bottom of your library in random order. So, Jota comes down, you play, you know, a four mana card, you find a three mana card, and so on and so forth. Our mana base is pretty much conducive to um, 
to your domain. Uh, we have, of course, four Plaza of Heroes, four secluded courtyards because most things are human. Um, so we just name human with this. And then a bunch of the triomes to make sure that we are hitting the correct lands that we need. Uh, and then a bunch of dual lands. This can be removed. I used to run um, Tatiana. Titiana. You know what I'm saying. In the deck. Uh, but I took her out. So this, uh, the Sanctum of Nature can be removed as well. Uh, but anyways, that's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, please leave a like and a comment down below. We go over all the stats, the win rates, the matchups, everything like that at the end of the video. So stick around for that if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for the uh, the support on the recent videos. Uh, I really do appreciate it, as well as the feedback. Um, hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you in the games. We go first. Uh, we'll keep it. So we'll go probably into Gwenna. Well, all right, never mind. Now they know. <laughs> they know the secrets. A virus beetle. Well, we can actually kill that with Loran, so. And then we get to draw a card. Huh? Hmm. Let's go Gwenna here. Tap land next. Jota can come down next turn. Well, let's see if they get rid of the Gwenna here, actually. We'll toss the land so they know what cards we have. Let's see if they do it. They do. Go for draw then. Yeah. That's a fun card. Here's Shauna. The Raven Man. Virus Beetle. Hmm. I kind of want to discard this. Or uh, Joda, I mean. Let's do that. Coming in? No? Alright, draw a card. Oh, baby. What a little selection we have here, huh? Let's make it so it's hard for them to target us, then. Okay. That's exile, not discard, right? <laughs> oh, baby. Would you look at that? Let's take out the shadow. Get the drain going. Back to 24. Opponent needs some sweepers. Decline. We have no mana. They do have permanence to sacrifice a little bit, unfortunately. <laughs> Mm, land, don't like that. 
All right, we'll attack in with Shauna then, um, and then draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Maybe we actually play Thalia. All right, in we go. We'll see how long they can survive the onslaught. Do you have backup Thalia? Okay. They don't like Thalia at all, do they? Ooh. Good card to have. So they need a farewell here. Nope. <laughs> what a card. <laughs> uh. mm. We go first. Not great. To be honest, not great at all. But we can go Thalia on turn two, a jar. Hopefully, find lands. So we'll lead off with uh, the Sanctum. Oh, goody, mono red. Make him deal with this. Play with fire now, or do it next turn. Yep. Now it is. Sure. Keep denying their board a little bit. Okay. They take the land. Let's go with Hajar here. Alright, they take out Thalia. I don't think we sack a jar here. A jar too important. Here's Gwena. We will sack a jar to save Gwena, for sure. Because next turn we can just go Jota. Okay, we'll let that through. No biggie. Alright, so we go Jota here. Then we go Denek. No, like a million cards. And now we race to see who wins. Okay. 
Okay. Plays around removal onto Jota in the form of burn spells. They can take out Denik now, but whatever. I will remember you. Oh, one instead. We got there. One goes first. Uh, hmm. So we can go Irithon 3 as well as Gwenna. If one of them sticks, potentially Joda. Let's try it out. Ooh. Potentially control here. Let's go tap land first. Oh no, it's soldiers. What? With those lands? Weird. Okay. So I think we go for Gwenna here. And then into Jota as soon as possible, and then just smash in. If they Brutal Cathar, we can Urtai on their turn. So then we untap. Alright. Don't care about Thalia. Here comes Jota. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. So they need one more creature on the field to get their flying combo off. But by then, it will be too late. One of untaps. Now we go insane. Big and beefy. See what the opponent has to deal with this. Again, if they go Brutal Cathar, we'll just Urtai. I'm sure they're looking for it. Yep. We force blocks here by attacking in with everything. Okay. They need to live one turn, basically. But they also need to have their board um, of five or more. So. Okay. Let's go human. Let's swing. Get some good life back here with Denek. And they lose three on board. So since we have a backup Joda in hand, I think what I want to do is maximize our life gain off of the Denik here. Do we? Do we care about that? And then kill the Sky Strike? Yeah, let's do that. Also maximizes damage with Gwenna here. They go for draw. Get Loran in there. Let's destroy this one. There's Urtai. Destroy the Sky Strike. Alright, we get in for nine. Heal up to 23. Pretty good for us. And we also have backup Joda uh, to kill them next turn because the Gwenna will untap. Let's see if they found the Brutal Cathar. They did get to draw quite a few cards. Alright, they found it. No problemo. Yeah, you're gonna need blockers, my friend. You're gonna need some blockers. 
So, we tap here. I don't think it actually really matters. Um, but I guess we'll do black. And we'll do red. And we'll play Jota. And we'll swing. Thanks. Hmm. I don't go first. Could go Denik on two. All right. I'll try this. On a black. Get the headquarters down. Start getting the binding activated. And then I think maybe we'll try and get into my role here. They play discard. Gross. Go Denik. Toss a land here if we need to. Mm -hmm. So we have the green with the plaza. So we'll toss this. And then I think we're tossing... Hmm. Not the binding, I don't think. Maybe it's this other land. Because we can uh, get more land with, or not land, but mana ramp with Gwenna. There's Thalia. Thalia good. Thalia comes down. Give them the taxes. Alright, we can binding on the heavy. Eventually. Let's just play Myrill though. We'll take six from the heavy here. <laughs> All right. Here comes the Myrill. Take it all. We'll play this other plaza so we have the option to uh, save the Myral from removal. Alright. Oh dearie me. Conan is in trouble. <laughs> Get out of here with your discard. Alright, they block the Dunnock. Get rid of the Raven Man. I guess we get rid of both, huh? Okay. Could play the Dunnock, but I think we keep up the Plaza of Heroes to protect Myrill. Because that is how we win. Good game indeed. All right, going first. Hmm. No Danico on turn two feels bad, but maybe we draw into it. See if we find a blue land. Soldiers. Okay. Ooh, Torrens. Alright, we'll go Torrens on three then. Fist of Angels. Then Rem. Katilda. Alright, I think it's still Torrens here, then we'll go Rem. And then probably Katilda. Sure. 
protection from werewolves feels good here. Hmm. So. Is it Gwena or is it Catilda? I kind of think it's Gwena because it makes them need another Brutal. If they don't have it, then... Feels bad for them. Okay, counter onto Cathar. Blocks here. Ooh, a binding. Well, here's Joda. Let's go Danek now. They need another Cathar here. Odoran doesn't quite do it. Seems like they're going all in though. Why play this if no attack? Okay. All right, we find a land. So, I think we want a binding the Cathar. So let's tap for white and black. And then we play Urborg. There's another Dunnock. And we'll keep this one. Oh. Alright. Well, we would have binding done binding onto the Cathar, gotten Torrens back, then probably attacked in with the Denek to get some life, uh, and we would have been good from there. Alright, we go first. Keep. Tap land first. Could play Katilda, but Katilda likely just gets cut down. Um, let's plan for Loran on turn three. Into another one. Into Mishra. Uh, human? No cut down? Shocking. Let's go Guana. Next turn they do have the cut down. Maybe not, actually. Next turn we'll go uh, Mishra. Take it. Ooh, Urborg, though. Yes, please. <laughs> Alright, so we can tap to draw. 
All right. And we can play this. Keep this one. Kill this. Submit zero. All right. We're in business. Not the shoulder, no. No attacks in. Sean is good. Play our land, and we'll play our Mishra here. Also, we'll play Katilda. may begin sacrificing your permanence. <laughs> I want to gain some life. Perhaps it's time for Invoke Despair? Liliana. Okay. To help, but I'm taking the credit when we win. Sure. Um, oh, one of your friends has to leave. I guess it's this for now. And we get another one. <laughs> uh, Want to kill Herborg? Now you're gonna have to. Pay the price, which you can't. <laughs> uh. Yes, become frustrated, opponent. Become frustrated. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, we are at nine, so we'll need to uh, get Shauna going here, or we die completely. We'll have to find a solution solution to this shouldered. All right, they've got a buster. We draw a card. Okay, that's not good. Not good at all. Give everything a 1-1. One, one. So. Okay. some life. Back to nine. Are we drawing here is the question. I don't think so.
acá. The shadow is super annoying. We're gonna have to find a way around. There's a my roll. Hmm. Let's get some life. Okay. Back to nine. Down to three. Down to one next turn. See if they attack. No attacks. Down to one. Alright, so... Everything with Vigilance goes in. I don't know what they're roping for. I feel like this isn't a super hard decision. You just let everything in. You're at 34 life. You can take... What, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Well, actually, they do, take, they do take a lot of damage. But I think you let everything in and then you hedge your bets that you're going to win next turn. Although, I guess that's very dependent on what they have in hand. Yeah, so we definitely boost everything with Katilda here. We don't have to tap uh, because we have... The Permanence. Don't tell me they quit. They're in such a good spot. Oh, alright. <laughs> uh, we'll take that. I don't go first. Um, hmm. Mm hmm, hmm. This is kind of a sus keep. Because if they kill our stuff, we're in trouble, but looks like it's just soldiers. Eh. There's Katilda. So I'll probably go Torrens on three. Or, we could just play Katilda. Alright. Yeah, let's play tap... Wait. I can't. I'm done. Hmm. Alright, so what? Tap land Thalia? Or just Torrens? We can't play Torrens anyway. Ay ay ay. Count your mana. Come on now. Get Dunnick down. Let's 
really interesting. So if I play Katilda here, and then this land, can I also play Torrent? Yes. Will they have resolute reinforcements. I am misplaying this out of my mind. God, I'm so dumb. Hmm. What do they have? Surely not an emperor. got chumpers now. I'm just confused about what they're holding. Maybe they have another lay down arms. An absence. Alright. We'll draw with the token here. Joda. All right, down to twelve. They need a Cathar. Don't find it. Unless they have one in hand already. Thalia still stops all this from attacking. Okay. We've got the Harbin. Human? Wena? Another Katilda. Send it. You're dead if you don't block other stuff. There you go. the two. Alia holds the line. Not enough. Going first, we'll keep this. For sure. Alia into Gwena. Or maybe it's Torrens here. Hmm. No, I think still Gwena. Because then next turn we can play Torrens and Katilda off the, uh, the Gwena. Or just play Mishra. I mean, that's good, too. But I think we just go Torrens here. And then we go Mishra. Mono green. Interesting. Do a Prowler. Well, it does shut down our attack. Okay. 
case they have aspirations of targeting our stuff. So next turn we attack in with Mishra and Torrens. Torrens trains becomes a 3-3, three, three. then we can tap Katilda to get plus ones. Oh, never mind. Problem solved. Alright. <laughs> That'll do it. Very nice. All right, welcome back to the post-game deck overview. That was Joda Bro, um, a deck we haven't played in a while. We made a couple of adjustments. Um, we added in the Torrens and the Rem. Uh, I don't know why Untapped is showing the 4-0, because we actually did lose some games in here. Um, I think we lost two, and we played six, seven, I think eight. So I think the record is six and two. Um, so, but I'm not sure why uh, they didn't track this. But um, I think I'm just showing all the games in the video anyway. So you'll see the losses there. Uh, but pretty much the deck feels really good, except against Farewell. Obviously, Farewell just wrecks us. Um, other than that, though, in creature-based matchups, of which there are a lot, soldiers, um, mono red, mono black, uh, we can hold our own for sure. Um, I think in terms of card adjustments, take out this put in a different land, doesn't matter which one, but just a different one. Probably actually something with blue or white in it so that you can make sure you try and hit your, your early two drops. Um, and yeah, I didn't really get to play with Rem as much as I would have liked, but I put it in there because of the mono red matchup, making it something that they have to take care of with a lightning strike uh, before they can you know, do face damage to us with their uh, their burn spells or kill our creatures with their burn spells. So um, I'd be interested to see how that plays out more. I do like the addition of Torrens. Um, I think that, you know, being an entirely creature-based deck, Torrens in here does make sense just as a one of, um, and you're happy to get them off of the Jota or, or however else. Um, Gwena I like a lot, unfortunately, dies to cut down, which feels pretty bad a lot of the time. Um, removed one Leyline Binding. I still think Le Leyline has a place in the list. Uh, because, you know, you can't really beat a two mana flash speed exile removal effect. Um, so I think this is, I think this is okay as a two of in here. Um, maybe even a three of, I just don't know what I would take out, to be honest. Um, Loran is a really fun card. Uh, like I mentioned before, Gwena. Rem, so far untested, but I'd want to test more with this. Uh, Torrens, I like the addition of. <laughs> I really like the Radadrabic and the, uh, the Mishra Tamer of Makfawa combo. Um, that is just miserable for opponents to deal with, which is very fun. In terms of our win rate, um, it's saying 100% here. You saw what we matched up against. Um, but overall, let me just scroll down, actually. So uh, we last really played this deck about a month ago. Um, we had 100% win rate, Diamond 4 to Diamond 3, 6 and 0. And that's what we played up against. Uh, and then we played it... Oh, wait, no, it did count the losses. Did it? Ah, here we go. All right. So, we lost against mono black, mono white, and mono red. So really, our our win rate is 8 and 3. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Um, yeah, loss against mono red. Probably just burned out. Mono black, same thing. Mono white... This was a mid-range deck, and they had farewell, um, so that's why we lost that one. And then, yeah, everything else was good. So again, uh, decks that run kind of like removal, and then maybe probably also mono blue tempo uh, would be a bad one, um, unless you can resolve your early game stuff and then just go from there. Uh, but everything else, more creature-based and mid-rangey, um, is not too bad. We're pretty resilient against um, like single target removal once we get a couple of key cards down. So. Uh, the deck is really fun. If you like Jota and you have the cards, I would definitely try it out. Um, I think, I mean, <laughs> every single card in here is rare 
or mythic except for the secluded courtyards so a little bit wild card intensive i think uh but i'm sure you could replace some of these legendaries with other ones that you may have in your collection it would do just fine um i would also probably want to experiment with the dragons you could definitely take it away from human tribal although i think the secluded courtyards really helps to smooth out the mana base um, by having mainly humans in here so i don't know how well that would work out but um yeah anyways that's it for the video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like and a comment down below uh and i will see you in the next one